rational, it's negative 7 over 2x plus 1. Now, we could look at this one as actually being in transformed form. We could put a plus 0 at the back, right? <clears throat> because it's just a number over an x. So you could look at it as transformed form. So you would know the vertical asymptote is always based off the denominator. If I solve that out, I'm going to get x equals negative a half. <clears throat> and then at the back, I would have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Or remember the rule that when the denominator is smaller degree than the numerator, it's always y equals 0, right? That's the rule. Now your domain... <clears throat> Just kidding. Your domain is x such that x can't equal negative a half x er. And then your range would be not equal to 0 y er. The second one, I gave you a quadratic on the top and linear on the bottom. So degree, yo. Um, with the set notation, how would you write that? So it would just be round brackets from negative infinity, like negative infinity to negative a half, round bracket or negative a half to infinity. This one we have a degree 2 over degree 1, which means we're going to get in ours always a point of discontinuity in a linear line after. Um, in other curriculum, outside of our curriculum, you could get a slant asymptote. You could actually get an asymptote that's like a line, like a linear line. Um, but not in this curriculum, but it is in calculus. So we can factor this, and we're going to get x minus 5, x plus 1 over x minus 5. The x minus 5s cancel off, and the moment that they cancel off, it means I have a point of discontinuity. I'm right as a P of D because it's my notes. I'm not going to do that on a test, though. So I have a point of discontinuity at 5. And, then I plug it in here, 5 plus 1, which is 6. Do I have any asymptotes? No, I have a line at x plus 1, and I'm going to go draw that line, and then at 5, 6, I have an open dot. That's it. Bless you. There's no asymptotes. You only end up with an asymptote if, and only if, when you cancel mm -hmm. off your factor, you're still left with a rational after, not just a line. And then we go do our domain and range. Which is going to be x such that x can't equal 5, x er. And my range is y such that y can't equal 6, y er. <laughs> Number 3, we have y equals 5 minus 4x over 2x minus 1. So it's just a basic rational function degree 1 over degree 1. Our vertical asymptote comes from the denominator because nothing cancels off. So I get a vertical asymptote at x equals a half by solving my denominator out. And then I get a horizontal asymptote when they're the same degree as a fraction of the leading coefficients. So it's not 5 over 2, it's the leading coefficient. It's the one in front of the x. So it would be y equals negative 4 over 2, which is just negative 2. If I do interval notation, it's negative infinity to a half or a half to infinity. I do range it's negative infinity to negative two or negative two to infinity. <clears throat> for number four, we have to factor the top. When you factor the top by decomp, you get what? X minus two and something else. Two X plus one. And then when you factor the bottom, you get x minus 2, x plus 1. Difference between number 4 and number 2. Look at number 2. When the factors cancel off, I'm just left with a line, right? y equals x plus 1. So it would be the line y equals x plus 1 with an open dot. We agree? Yeah. yeah. I just have a question. Like, why are we supposed to try and simplify it? Like, because for 3, you don't. You know what I mean? Like, because um, how you can add stuff in what we learned a few days ago? If they ask you for transformations. Okay. So otherwise you just leave it? Yep. So number four here, when these cancel off, I'm actually still left not with a line, I'm left with a what? A rational function. So when that happens, I'm going to get a point of discontinuity because of the two, and I'm going to get vertical and horizontal asymptotes because of the rational function that's left behind. 
So I'm going to end up be I'm going to end up drawing a rational function with asymptotes, and then I'm going to go to the point of discontinuity and draw an open dot. So this one will have asymptotes and an open dot. So how do I get the actual point of discontinuity? I have to plug it, the 2 back in there. So I'm going to get 2 times 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1, which is 5 over 3. So I actually have 2 and 5 thirds as my point of discontinuity. And I can short form because these are my notes. Then my asymptotes. Well, my vertical comes from the denominator, what's left over. So it's going to be x cat or x equals sorry, negative 1. And then my horizontal asymptote, once again, I have degree 1 over degree 1. So, <clears throat> I take a fraction of my leading coefficients, which is 2 over 1, so it's y equals 2. Most people, by the time the test comes, do really well on this, and then on the domain and range, they don't actually write all the things. Asim it's the same thing. You'd have what? No, nope, because it cancels off. <laughs> you can't cross stuff off on the original. This is a whole thing, yes. and this is a whole thing. Yes. You can't just go crossing things off. I'm confused. Why is it the Right, so it's an open dot, not an asymptote. So if you looked at the graph, you'll have a graph that actually covers this rational function, right? And then in that rational function, you're going to have an open dot at 2 and 5 thirds. So 2 still won't exist. It just won't be a dashed line. It'll be like you'll have like a rational function. Let's pretend it's like this. But then in this rational function, you have an open dot. Does that make more sense? So it still doesn't exist. This one would be a point of discontinuity and not an asymptote. Like if they asked for asymptotes, you would not list this. And then these would be dashed lines. Does that make sense? So the dashed lines really help you draw the graph. The point of discontinuity, so what this would be the graph, you'd just draw it, and then you'd go to your point of discontinuity, 2 and 5 thirds, and you'd just go erase that spot and put an open dot. So most people are pretty good at finding this. Your domain and range you get wrong on the test all the time because people won't put the y value of the, ask, of the point of discontinuity. So when you have those, your domain is easier not to do interval notation unless forced. x such that x can't equal 2 and negative 1. XDR, you're going to have two values. And your range is going to be Y such that Y can't equal 5 thirds and 2. Pardon? Yeah, it would just be like a number line, so it takes forever. So you're going to go 5 thirds is lower than, is 5 thirds lower than 2 or higher than 2? It's lower because 6 over 3 is So you're going to go negative infinity to 5 thirds, or 5 thirds to 2, or 2 to infinity. Because you're just representing the number line. Like if this was 5 thirds and this was 2, I know I'm blocking it for all the people on the left. Sorry. If that was 5 thirds and 2, this would be negative infinity. This would be positive infinity. Remember, interval notation just represents a number line. So you would do this, and then open dot means round bracket, this. Round bracket, round bracket, this. So interval notation is literally representing an upper line. Yeah? Because it's an actual, an asymptote is like the graph curves there, right? No graph curves here. It's an open dot. That's it. Yeah. So like you have a rational function. So you were not going to have an asymptote because if you had an asymptote, your graph would curve at it. It's not curving at it. It's just an open dot. Yeah. Like, why does it do that? <laughs> because it completely cancels off. So you're left with this as your function. Because these factors cancel off, you're left with this as a function, not this. This goes away. <laughs> Yeah. 
The reason the reason why it dr doesn't draw these is because this is literally this literally cancels off. So it's yeah, because it does the math in it. So this is gone. This cancels off. So it's completely gone. So it's just going to draw the graph of two x x plus one because that's because this is gone. But it has to still represent that piece, which means it can't exist at negative two. So that's just a dot, not an asymptote. So it's because these two factors completely cancel off, it draws what's left over, which is this. But because this did exist at one point, it takes the two and it makes it be a point of discontinuity and over dot. Okay, we're going to go to graphs to make it easier for you. So look at the paper that you have in front of you. I have to bring it up. It'll pop up in a second. So here it says, write the equation. So on page 443, it's just giving you a rational. They're all just rationals. Do you see that? There's no open points of discontinuity, is there? No. So there's two separate ways you can do these questions. One is this one. This was from um, 9.1, I believe. Yeah, 9.1 in the textbook. And you can put it into the transformed form <coughs> because it's actually um, just a rational function. The only time you can put it into the transformed form is if there's a point of discontinuity on the graph. So we're going to look at the two different ways so that you can spot which one's easier for you to do. So we're going to look at this one. So this one has asymptotes. Oh, join me. Pen, join me. So this one has asymptotes here and here. They're just you can't see them because it's a dark black line, so the asymptotes aren't showing up. But they're here and here. We agree. Now, if my a value is positive, what quadrants are they normally in? One and three. Where are they currently? So I'm going to expect that I'm going to have a negative a. And if I don't have a negative a, something's wrong. Now, when we did polynomials, then we did quadratics last year. We would always fill in information, fill in a point, solve for A every single time, right? I labeled it as an M. You could leave it, leave it as an A, you could leave it as an M. You can pick it whatever you want, but you're going to have to solve for it because it's your vertical stretch factor, right? So in this case, we would put our asymptotes. This asymptote is at X equals 0. This one's at Y equals 0. So has my vertical moved at all? No. Has my horizontal moved at all? No. So when I go to make the equation, it's going to be y equals a over x minus 0 plus 0, technically, right? Because when it's in transformed form, the bottom is the vertical asymptote, right? How much you move to the right to the left, and the vertical translation is how much you move up and down, right? And we can use this when there's no asymptotes. If you look at number 7, sorry, not no points discontinuity. If you look at number 7, not one of the graphs, one of the points has a point of discontinuity on it. There's all of them are solid points. When you flip over and you look at the back, number seven, there's open dots. Totally different situation. You won't be able to use transform form. Okay? So, I haven't solved for A, though. So, what? how do we solve for A? Pick a point. And we always pick a bolded one. I'm going to choose mm, negative one and four. You can choose any of them. It doesn't matter. So, I'm going to pick <coughs> negative one and four, and I'm going to make it be my X, Y. So I'm going to go 4 equals a over negative 1 minus 0 plus 0. Do I really need those? No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then you get 4 equals a over negative 1 multiplied by negative 1, and I get negative 4, which makes me kind of happy because I know it's an opposite quadrant, so I know I need the negative. Now, just like every other time we do any other equation for any graph, the good thing is we can walk away happy or sad. Because we can type it in with the exact same window and see if it matches it, right? So we can walk away happy when it matches it, or sad when you're like, oh, crud, it's not even close, okay? So remember, once we get A, we're not done, we have to plug it back in. So we get Y equals negative 4 over X minus 0 plus 0. But like I told you, do we need the zeros? No, so they're going to write it as Y equals negative 4 over X. And when I plug that in, I would get the same graph. So you should be able to spot that when there are no points of discontinuity and it's just a basic rational function with one vertical asymptote, one horizontal asymptote, boom, 
fill it into transformed form. So B, is my A going to be negative or positive? Positive because I'm in quadrants, 1 and 3. I know I'm shifted, but bear with, you can imagine, right? Top right, bottom left, basically. If it's in the top right and bottom left, our A should be positive. So <clears throat> let's go through and make our basic function. Y equals A over X. Has my X done anything? It's normally here. It's now here. So what did it do? Three left. So I'm going to put X plus three. And then what about my Y? Nah. Just nah. Nah means nothing. No. <laughs> it means zero. So we could add a zero at the back, right? Do we have to write the zero at the back? No. And now we just take a point. I'm going to use negative two and one. And X, Y. So I'm going to go 1 equals a over negative 2 plus 3. 1 equals a over 1. So a equals 1. And then I just have to plug it back in. y equals 1 over x plus 3. 4 is 4? What? I'm looking at Oh, stop it. Just go ahead. It's hard. Overachieving. I'm That's trying to see Overachieving. Okay. If we look at C, it's in top right, bottom left. So our A should be positive. So we're going to get Y equals A. What? You have to watch your. Yeah, you have to watch your axis. These are actually all going up by 2. People will give me 1 on the test. Watch yourselves, right? Because they can make it go up by whatever they want. This one's going up by 2. And it's moved 2 to the right. So I'm going to go x minus 2. And then it's moved how many up? 4 up. So I'm going to go plus 4. Why did it move 2 to the right? The scale is... Because this is your... What? This is, this is your y-axis. You might just not be seeing the axis. You might be seeing it on the other side. It's right here. It's right here. And then we're moving this way. I got it perfect. No, no, stop. Guys, it's because you, this is your y-axis, right? And that's where we sit at, which our y-axis is x equals 0. We agree? And then we have to get to it. There we go. Yeah. It's just hard to visualize sometimes because you sometimes go from the asymptote to it instead, backwards. So you just have to watch yourself. It's the same thing with transformations when you're going from a graph to a new graph. Sometimes people will go from the new to the old by accident. So you just have to watch yourself, that's all. So we're always starting on the axes and then moving from there, right? And then point is at negative 2 and negative 2. You can pick whatever point you want. You'll still get the same thing. So negative 2, negative 2. And by negative 2, I mean positive 2. So negative 2, positive 2. So I'm going to get uh, 2 equals a over negative 2 minus 2 plus 4. And I'm going to actually have to subtract 4 first. So I get negative 2 equals a over negative 4. And then I have to multiply by negative 4, which is making me happy because I know my a needs to be positive. 8 equals a. So I get y equals 8 over x minus 2 plus 4. You do d quickly because then we're going to move on. D quick.
Okay, we're going to flip over. You should have had negative 4 over x minus 1 plus 6. And by plus, I mean minus 6. <laughs> yeah, plus negative 6, as I said. Okay, I'm fine with being poked on it. That's how I roll. All right. So, we write the equation for this one. This one's problematic because it has an asymptote. It has a point of discontinuity. The moment it has a point of discontinuity, please don't try and put it in transformed form. That's where people, like, die on the test. They'll try and put it in trans. You can't. You can't put one with an asymptote and a point of discontinuity in transformed form. Okay? I'm going to go back. You guys aren't going to. You're just sitting there. Feeling all confident. Where the heck's my thing? Here we are. Okay. So if we go back to these ones where we had points of discontinuity, which if you look is number two and number four. Do you see them? Okay. This is where we're going to have to pay attention. With number two, it happens that you get a degree two on the top and a degree one on the bottom when your graph is completely just a straight old line with a point of discontinuity. We agree? For number four, you're going to get a quadratic over quadratic whenever you have a rational function with an open dot every single time. So you better have a quadratic over a quadratic or you don't have something right. Now, what are these pieces? Well, if we look here, I'm going to give you a little bit of information to help a sister out, you know. So these here, these cancelled off ones are always what? The x to the point of discontinuity. Basically the factor of the point of discontinuity. Those are the easiest to do. You just put them in. One on top, one on bottom. People then go cancel them back off again. I'm like, you just put them on. Don't <laughs> take them back off. But I know you have like an addiction to, to simplifying. It's, we've, put you, we've made you that way. I'm sorry. This here is what? Always. The vertical asymptote, the factor of it. Correct? Want to know what this is? This is your x-intercept. The factor of it. Every single time. And then you're going to have to solve for an a in front. Every single time. Most often your a is 1. So that's why we don't see numbers sitting in front. But sometimes it's not. So what would this be then? In this case, this is my what? My point of discontinuity. We agree? Why is there nothing else on the bottom here? Because there's no vertical asymptote. It's just a straight line. Yep. What would this be? The factor of my x-intercept every single time. That's what it always is. And then you'd solve for an a. This one just happened to not have one again. Most of the time your a value will be 1 and you're not going to see one. But then there's that 10% times when it's not. So you always, whenever you are solving for any equation of any graph, you're going to look for an A value. Just keep that in mind. If I'm doing a polynomial graph, if I'm doing a rational graph, if I'm, doing, I'm going to solve for that A value. So let's go ahead and see if these, this is not the right place. We're in, this is, that's 30 dash, that's, that's 20 dash one. So, it's not. so we're here. Boom. <coughs> Bless you. Well, it just did something. I don't know what it did. Okay, we're here. So, when we go to make the equation, we're going to do y equals a, I have a point of discontinuity. Do I not? When it's at zero, life goes crazy. If I put you a point of discontinuity at zero or an asymptote at zero, stuff goes crazy. Keep in mind if it's at zero, what's its factor? Yeah, so x equals zero would be your root. So its factor would be this. That's all it is. So when it's at zero, it's just an x. I get some crazy stuff happening. People are like, I must not just put x. But you do. So we're going to put an x. And then we're going to put an x. Right? And then you're going to put your x-intercept on the top. What is it? Six. Negative 6. So it's going to be x plus 6. And then what's going to go on the bottom? x plus 2, or vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote. Right here, right? It's always p of d, vertical asymptote, x-intercept, solve for a. And how do you solve for a? Pick any point but the point of discontinuity and the x. Please don't pick those. And when you go to solve them, you're going to cancel these x off to solve for a, right? If you keep these, these will become zeros, and you're going to have problems. So when you go to solve for a, you, just, you do actually don't count in your x's. 
So what about this one? I would end up with y equals a, do I have a point of discontinuity? Yes, it's at what x value? Negative 3, so I'm going to get x plus 3, and then on the bottom I'm going to get x plus 3. On the top is my x-intercept, what's it at? It's at 7, so what am I going to put? x minus 7, and then what goes in the bottom? My vertical asymptote, which is 1, so it's going to be x minus 1. And then I'm going to use a coordinate to solve for a. You're going to cross, you're just going to ignore them to solve for a. Because if you plug it in, these ones will become zeros and it will cause you real big issues. So to solve for a, you're not going to put those in. But with the equation, you have to keep them, right? Because I need a quadratic over a quadratic. Yeah. So these two are your homework, number seven and this one. Number eight. No, you can leave them in factored. The only time you have to put them into the other form is if it's like a multiple choice and they have it factored. 